Creighton wants to ratchet it up. It's going to be a fun one today. Sort of like our pays up for the game. That's right. Yeah, that kind of thing. You look at our deep Grand Cherokee starting lineups for today. Great scores all over the floor. That's what makes it such a great matchup. Gillespie, Moore, Daniels, Samuels, Robinson, Earl for Villanova. Zagorowski is the straw that stirs the drink. Ballot can shoot from the parking lot. Mahoney has been slumping. Bishop and Jefferson in establishing their team's tempos. Colin Gillespie needs to slow it down. Zes Zagorowski needs to put his foot on the gas. Beautiful look of our opening tap, and it's controlled to Villanova. Game greeting, Brent Hampton and Tim Clockerty, our officials for this afternoon's game. Tim, Greg McDermott said the key to the game defensively is not biting on shot fakes. So that's when the dominoes start to fall, when you bite on those shot fakes, something to keep an eye on when Creighton's on defense. Every Villanova player will post up. Moore just did that. Robinson Earl, no help coming for Bishop. He got a hand on it. Shot clock at one. And a late pump goes crying off the front rim. But Samuels cleans the rebound. And Robinson Earl takes advantage of the second chance opportunity. And well, that's what Samuels has been doing. He's kind of the Swiss Army knife for this team. Athletic, getting an extra possession. And a big shot for Jeremiah Robinson Earl. The numbers 23 are going to be very important today. A pilfer from Gillespie. What an addition Justin Moore has been to this team. A clear-cut go-to third scorer. Samuels, sometimes a reluctant shooter, gets that one to go. But you mentioned it, Timmy. All five guys will post up, so Creighton's going to be put on an island frequently. Zagorowski with a quick answer. And that's obviously what Creighton wants to do. Continue to establish tempo, play fast, and... Even against a set defense, Zegarowski's going to try to probe in there. Big for Zegarowski's confidence to get one going early. Gillespie. Again, a long rebound and a tap out from Samuel. Robinson Earl coming off a 10 of 11 shooting game. His last time out against Marquette at home Wednesday night. He was dynamite, had 27. Moore on the post up. Can't get it to go. Mahoney pulls it down. Crowd of just under 2,000, 10% capacity allowed inside the CHI arena, making some noise. It is a different atmosphere Absolutely. that we've had for the bulk of the season in this building and throughout the Big East Conference. And something Jay Wright said his team was excited about to play in front of fans for the first time this year. Another offensive rebound, this one from Gillespie. And on the shot fake, a foul against Mahoney. Well, it's not too late. To enter the Fox Super 6 College Hoops Contest for a chance to win a $1,000 prize. Download the free app and answer six questions about Villanova Creighton for your chance to win. Tim, already offensive rebounds really been the tail of the first couple minutes of this game. Villanova doing a good job getting extra possessions. Oh, what a move. What a move. And you know what? Ballot really stood fast on the original pump fake. But he's a little flat-footed. I mean, it's one thing to not bite on the shot fake, but you got ready to slide your feet when a Villanova Wildcat puts it on the deck. What a slip! And a slam! Slip it! Slam it! This time it's the Bishop checkmate. And we're tied at six. And I think Bishop is arguably the most improved player on this Creighton roster. What he can do at that five spot with his athleticism really changes this Creighton offense. In the post up and a quick outlet to Samuels. Well, he's gotten two quick looks, and I believe Greg McDermott now knows Samuels is one you've got to check. Yeah, Greg McDermott told me last night, gonna make Samuels knock down a few, even though he's been hot, and he's knocked his first two down. So I think Creighton's gonna start to creep out a little bit. But this is what Villanova will do, Tim. They'll, they'll slam the brakes. And they'll be relentless, relentlessly disciplined in what they want offensively. They want to get post-ups, jump stops, shot fakes, and ball reversal. Well, you saw they had a 96-point effort against Marquette. And by the way, they did not roll over. Wojo's team just was outmanned. They only trailed by eight at the break that night. That one does not fall for 
and more. And here comes Zagorowski from downtown. How about Marcus Zagorowski's start to this game? And the point of pickup has to be well beyond the three-point line with Zagorowski. If he's got space, he's teeing it up. Let's see if they go to Samuels. He has Nova's last seven. They're tied at nine. And I'd say this crowd is being heard from. No help coming. Count and a foul. Justin with a little bit more to give Villanova the lead. Mahoney gets the foul. But how about the backcourt play? What we're discussing here about where this program is beyond the Big East footprint. When you look at the resume, he took the different route. And I thought it was interesting when he had uh, his son Doug coming up. He made the choice on his own to leave Iowa State. Felt that he would be more comfortable in an environment like Creighton, a basketball-only school. And boy, has he been. Well, and to go up a level from the Missouri Valley Conference to the Big East and have Creighton's level of play increase just really speaks volumes to it. Oh, how about that? High arching pass. And Bishop with a slam to remember. That is a huge part of Creighton's offense, that pick roll lock to the rim. And Bishop can go get it above the rim. Swider in the game out of the timeout. Mahoney, by the way, picked up his second foul going to break. So O'Donnell O'Connell is coming to the game for Creighton number five at white. Nice little tuck under. Two misses of bunnies by Colin Gillespie and Zagorowski clear. Look at that hustle by Gillespie. Never giving up on the defensive end. He knocks it away. Well, how about this lob, Timmy B? And the big thing is it's Ballock. Gillespie can't sink in to help because Ballock's such a good shooter. See how Gillespie's hugging up in the arc? <laughs> and Swider too far attached, not attached to his body. And a lob. And then you know that guy's got... Floor burns all over his body. He's not shy to dive on the Yeah, team. and he was embarrassed after missing both shots, especially the putback. Uh, the the matchups in this game are just terrific. Gillespie will pick up that hand check against Ballot. And the reason is because all of the guys on the floor can stroke it. Yeah, and everybody, this is a game where if you can't guard one-on-one, -on -one, you can't play. Right. I mean, it, it is one of those kinds of games because everyone on the court can shoot it, can pass it, can handle it. If you're not a college basketball aficionado, your biggest critique would be, gosh, the iron is unkind a lot. We see a lot of games in the 50s. You won't have that issue today. No, both these teams can really shoot. Quick burst. Zagorowski wide open. That one off the front rim. Long rebound off the deck by Swire. I think Villanova's had a lot of success with posting up their guards. Gillespie's on the bench, but whether you get... Justin Moore in the post, or Daniel in the post, or Samuels. Good things have happened for Nova. With double, Moore comes out of it. Wow. He was doubled, and then he got some room with the step back, and it's 15 to 11. And so Justin Moore being able to handle the ball when Gillespie goes off the floor is really important. Inside Bishop again. Now, right now, he's having no problem attacking the 10. Well, if there is a deficiency for Villanova, it's frontline size and rim protection. They don't have a big guy like a Daniel Chefu from the years past. Now, uh, Sadiq Bay Or Sadiq Bay a year yeah. ago. And so, Christian Bishop's not the biggest guy in the world, but he can hurt you in the post. More. Too much for Ballard. Man. Justin Moore get anywhere he wants to on the floor. As can this guy. With the arm, Samuels will pick up the personal foul. Well, look at Christian Bishop work and seal Cole Swider up the floor. Watch, he's going to work him up the floor, going to work him up the floor. Cole Swider, understand he's not a good post defender, and when you're in trouble, you want to front if you're not a guy that's accustomed defending big dudes in the block. And a great job by Bishop sealing his man and getting the throw. Of you know, he's really an undersized five. We, we get that, but this team doesn't mind having that. They will go big occasionally as Kalkbrenner gets into the game, number 32, the freshman from St. Louis. They're so very high on, but 
with uh, Robinson Earl being the other big, it's a perfect matchup. Both are undersized post players. Yeah, they're really very similar in that regard. Robinson Earl, a better perimeter shooter, but from a size and at athleticism standpoint, similarly built. But now Paul Brenner going to have a hard time guarding Robinson Earl if he's extended away from the basket. Yeah, this will be interesting to watch. Samuels sweeping, but he can't get it to go off the window. Jefferson brings it up. Zagorowski wide open. Yeah, Villanova's got to do a better job in transition, Tim, of finding these shooters for Creighton. Interesting stat that we discussed with the head coach, Greg McDermott, about this matchup. She has scrum underneath, loose ball. Finally run down by Daniels. Saved into Gillespie's hands. Boy, the offensive rebounds and tap outs have been outstanding for Villanova. That one by Brandon Slater, number three. The offensive rebounds have really just been killer. Seven offensive rebounds now for Villanova. Six. Thank you. Robinson Earl. Look at that. Slater again. A third try. The scoop to the hoop is missed by Samuels. Great play defensively by Jefferson. Them yet. Moore has Nova's last eight, but think about that. Time of possession. A team that wants to, as you mentioned in the open, slow it down versus the other. Creighton trying to pump it up. And it's almost like, to stick with the football analogy of time of possession, where if Creighton comes down and they're going to take a quick shot and they don't get it, it's almost like a quick three and out in football, and you're back on defense. Absolutely. Zagorowski on the wing. What a pass from Mitch Ballock. And Zagorowski has gotten six great looks from the field. And he's getting wide open shots. That's the only thing I'd be a little concerned about if I'm Jay Wright. You got your superstar rolling for the Blue Jays. Tapped away. Great defensive work by Damian Jefferson. Ballock. Hello. How do you do? These transition threes are just killer for the Blue Jays. Gillespie's so good. He'll just operate the post, slow it down, make the right read. He's working against the best defender on ball, and you see Justin Moore from downtown put it in. Sharif Mitchell is the best on ball defender in the backcourt for McDermott. Number four and one, just into the game. And that's where when Mitchell's in the game, he's got to really empty the tank, heating up Gillespie. I think Colin may have picked up his second. Actually, Daniels gets the foul rather than Gillespie. Well, look at the great activity from Damian Jefferson. And in transition, you better build out to one guy for sure, and it's that man, Ballock. Got unlimited range. Jay Wright cannot be pleased with the transition defense, in particular with the three-point shooters thus far. Jefferson fading away. Tough shot. Moore did a nice job defensively. Gillespie can get back into the post and collapse the defense again. Robinson Earl working on Paul Brennan. You think he loves to use his quickness here. Pretty good defense by the young big fella. Well, most three-point games by major college teams right behind Baylor, you find that incredible Alabama team that's done so well all season long in the SEC. But Villanova also right there. And that Iowa team that put on a show with uh, Gus Johnson and Jim Jackson you saw earlier, just under 10 at 9.9. They were on fire today in East Lansing. But both these teams incredibly reliant on the three-point jump shot. And if there's one stat to watch, it would be that one. We're kind of telling the tale. Jefferson. Beautiful. That's what we're talking about. Every guy on the deck can nail it from downtown. 34% from three, Damian Jefferson. And that's a shot that he couldn't make a year ago. He's been in the gym working hard on that long-range jumper. Moore. Oh, the iron kind. 
and it's 24-22. I just love the poise from Nova. Not blinking with these long-range jumpers falling, just continuing to execute, get to their spots, fight the crowd. Hulk Brenner. Well, he's got skill. This young man has tremendous skill. Made the drive six hours from St. Louis for summer camps. McDermott loves this young man. Seven-footer gives Creighton something they didn't have last year. A guy that can defend the rim and can throw into the post with it. Robinson Earl. Another offensive rebound. Robinson Earl again. Boy, that was a touch of all. He'll get to the line to shoot two. Just more offensive rebounds, though, for Villanova. This is impressive. Well, Slater is all over the place on the glass. Yeah, no question. And Villanova's not necessarily a team that is incredible on the glass, but their energy and activity have been outstanding tracking down loose balls. It's really the difference in the game so far. Well, when we talked to Jay Wright, he anticipated this. And he said, you know, I love the matchup. You get a feeling from a veteran coach who's won two NCs like him. There are times when he just loves coaching his team up in a game. And the respect he has for the way McDermott has built his offensive culture is something I think Jay loves as well. Because they both allow players to make plays. Yeah, but they... But it's within the framework of intelligence. You know, I mean, they in the get, culture. In yeah. the culture. Yeah. Both these teams play with an abundance of freedom, but an abundance of intelligence as well. You don't see a lot of bad four shots when you're watching Creighton and Villanova play. Mahoney back on the floor playing with two. And I like that. You don't want to let Mahoney sit on the pine for too long. Get him in here. Make him feel like he's in rhythm a little bit. Try and conserve the foul trouble. And, uh, he struggled with his shot the last week, really, so they need him to get his confidence back. Mitchell. Oh, that was a little dead ball off the heel that he got to go. And that's Mitchell's shot. Not a great three-point shooter, so he's going to want to drive and get to the middle of the paint and shoot that floater. Two teams have combined for 20 field goals, just three turnovers. Nova, eight offensive rebounds. The Jays with six defensive. Samuels. I think we'll get the foul reaching in. Timeout. Creighton with a four-point lead of the reforma reformation of the Big East. Well, and I think over the last seven years, Villanova's the best college basketball program in the country. I'm with you. I am. I mean, two national titles, six Big East regular season titles, four Big East Conference tournament titles. And keep in mind, the tournament wasn't played yep. a year ago. Uh, and, and by the way, if Gonzaga wins a national title, I'll listen to that. Uh, yeah, and, or Virginia. Virginia yeah. wins another one. They're, uh, absolutely. They're in the conversation. But Jay Wright's squad in Philly, I think, is the cream of the crop over the last seven years. Yeah, uh, that's the key. The last seven seasons of college basketball to that talk process. There's a steal by Robinson Earl. The Cats only have... Three players that have gotten into the scoring column, and Gillespie is 0 for 4. But it's all the offensive rebounds that, are, that have really told the tale for Villanova. And seven offensive boards have just killed Craig on the glass. Moore can't get it to go. Bishop clears. Zagorowski's ability to find an avenue for himself or find a teammate. Pretty incredible. The definition of a lead guard. It was knocked away with 14 to shoot. Well, and Jay Wright said, we asked him, what's the key to this game? He said, you got to give Zagorowski different ball screen <laughs> defenses. If you give him the same look, he's like a great quarterback. He'll pick you apart. And so you've already seen some switches, some hedges. Icing the ball screen. Just some different things to throw Zagorowski off a little bit. Antoine Jones on the deck. That's a good no call on the block. Get a flop warning yeah. for Jermaine Samuel. Right. That's a big basket for a talented Memphis transfer. And Antoine Jones taking a look at it as Samuel is going to time it up. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's, and, and that's James Breeding that made that call, one of the best officials in the country. He's worked a number of Final Fours in recent years. Blue Jays lead it by five. I like that. 
Jay Randall do this time? They'll move Gillespie to the off guard. They'll let Moore enter offense. Between Gillespie and Moore, you have two guys that are basically combo guards that can do a lot of different things. Samuels checked by Ballard. Jay Wright likes this matchup. And that's why. But, and, and that's that's what Jay Wright will do. He'll find a matchup he likes and be relentless with it. Well, a little miscommunication there. And Jefferson quick to tell Zagorowski, that's my bad. It, it, and that's the thing. Take a look at it. Where Jermaine Sam is going to get it face up. Usually he's a driver, but he's feeling good about his jumper. He'll knock it down. Yeah, Villanova's a heavy ISO team, but they're also a heavy assist team as well. So guys make the right reads. Well, you don't play for either one of these teams without a basketball IQ. Gillespie willed that one in for his first bucket of the day. So much space in the interior, though, because you got shooters towing the arc. A lot of room for Gillespie to finish in the paint. Bishop rejected by Robinson Earl. Now a smaller defender on him. Justin Moore. Look at Zagorowski. Look at that. Goes reversal. Wow. Basketball. Uh, I used to do those at the NCAA tournament, the slam dunk finals. And I mean, he was right up there with Kobe Bryant. In fact, they were in a face off at the end of one years ago in high school. Of course, Kobe did not play at the collegiate level. Robinson Earl, an air ball this time. Speared out of the air by Jefferson. Bishop, nice pass. Counter, and the foul. Uh, got caught in a bad matchup, Timmy B. Gillespie trying to protect the basket. And he's guarding Christian Bishop. Good job by Jefferson to wait for the defense to work to the front to throw over the top. And Bishop finishes. That just shows you the versatility in his game. Does not collect the old-fashioned three-point play, and it's 34-29. We're going to get the 50 in the first half, I think. There's a chance. There's a chance one of these teams might get the 50. No question. You don't see that a lot in college basketball. Great defense by Zagorowski. All ball. Usually that's the time where Gillespie jump stops. But instead, he thought he had an advantage and tried to get all the way to the basket. Good hands from Zegarowski. Daniels enters the game for Swagger. And uh, Alex O'Connell, the Duke transfer, checks back in for Antoine Jones, who delivered some quality minutes. Hasn't played a lot recently. The Memphis transfer is that matchup. Samuels attacking Miss Ballard. Yeah. More from downtown. Bishop with the rebound. Ballot. What a shot save. Jefferson. And what a pass from Ballot. Looking the opposite side of the floor. And Jefferson drills his second triple. Largest lead of the day. And these 1,800 Blue Jane faithful are on their feet. seed radar and when the season ended they were projected two seeds yeah. so there's a lot of opportunities for teams to go on run but it's a nice way to stop smell the roses and kind of see where you're at with those top 16 seeds by the way our own Mark DeCorsi will have his new numbers out tomorrow and Colin Gillespie nails it from downtown 37 32 I should say Mike's uh, update is Monday rather than Sunday Zagorowski with another dime drop high in the air, flushed home by Bishop. But again, the common thread, Tim, is Mitch Ballock's defender has to be the one to help and take away that lob, but you don't want to step off his body. 
a great read from Zagorowski. Jays are shooting the lights out. 76% from the floor. And this is the best, arguably the best half of basketball Creighton's played all year. That's a walk. Great defensive work by O'Connell. Just look at Batlock. He's going to vacate. It's Gillespie that's got to slide down and take away that lob, which you've been told all week in practice, don't step off Batlock. Don't step off Batlock. That's the predicament that Creighton puts their help defenders in. you got such good shooters that you're reluctant to help. Zagorowski and Bishop, 10 of 13 for 24 of their points. And this is the best Zagorowski's looked all year. Bingo! Bingo! Bongo! Zagorowski again. 42-32. 17 points for Mr. Zagorowski. And the beat goes on in Omaha. Nice look. Gillespie with the feed and Robinson Earl with a point point reversal. Well, you know Gillespie's not going to panic. And a bump from Robinson Earl. But it's not that Villanova can't score. They're the fifth in offensive efficiency in the country, but this game's a little too fast right now for Villanova. They need to find a way to slow the tempo down. It was going to be a battle of wills of who could impose the pace of this game, and so far Creighton has won that battle. Judging from body language, even with the face mask on, I'm guessing Jay is saying a tighter whistle, please. <laughs> you know, he's not doubling. Jefferson can't get it to go. Samuels clears. You know, a quicker whistle would help the team that's trying to slow the pace down. No question about it. Look it up. Zagorowski, too strong that time. Credit Samuels with excellent hustle affecting that shot. Those are the little things Samuels does for this team. Working on Bishop. Nicely done. That's such good patience in the post from all these Nova guards. Time out. Well, he first of all sprints back. The big play as this crowd's kind of roaring here. And Samuels had a good first half. You know, in a COVID season, too, what have you seen? The teams that struggle defensively have really had problems, especially young teams. Jay's team is old, and it always gets older. And that was a veteran play by Samuels. Absolutely. Understanding the value of every possession, every basket. A good help from Robinson Earl. Ballock. Hope Brenner with the rebound. But yes, rest of the way by Slater. The heck of a job by Robinson Earl. Kind of an emergency switch on Ballock. No! Here's it to Zagorowski. He's on fire. He's feeling it. Yeah, he really is. He's moving so much better. Recovering from that torn meniscus in the offseason. Had a bump hamstring in the middle of this yeah. year. He is really flowing, isn't he, Timmy? Yeah, he's back to really 100% from that injury in the last game of the regular season last year against St. Paul. What a future he has. As does this young man, Justin Moore. Robinson Earl for three. Earl for one here for the Blue Jays. Well, they're not going to get the 50, but it felt like it. Boy, was this <laughs> quite the first half of basketball. I mean, and this appreciative crowd, the star of the game to this point, the contribution that they've made, not surprisingly. Look at Zagorowski go after that offensive rebound. Oh, we almost had a 75-footer that we made a, an excellent point about the lack of someone defensively to take him away. And Creighton is a team against top 10 teams. Their last five, look at that. They've done pretty well for themselves. Can they hold on? Villanova doesn't give up this many points in a half of play. Only the second time this year they've allowed 40-plus in a first half or any half.
Here's Mahoney, he got two early fouls, and he comes right in, and that's a great sign because he's really been struggling with his shot of late. Yeah, but Greg McDermott really said that he's liked the defensive effort from Mahoney, and missing shots has an impact on his energy on that end, but big to see him get a shot to go down. Moore trying to use his size advantage, has to give it up to Robinson Earl. Back to Justin for three. Count it. But Villanova just makes you pay every time you lose sight of man and ball. They are moving and relocating on the perimeter. Really good find and oh. knockdown. Speaking of finds, how about that? Bishop, a little dump down on a high-low move to Mahoney. At least, <laughs> it looks like Nova came out and wanted to really kind of ratchet up the pressure, but back-to-back -back baskets for Denzel Mahoney. That's where, when your five-man can pass, it's such a great pressure release. Gillespie, who struggled early, did get uncorked offensively in the last couple of minutes of the first half. Robinson Earl up and over Bishop. I don't think there's been enough touches for Jeremiah Robinson Earl. Whether it's pick and pops, whether it's post ups, you have to get the big fella involved, especially because Bishop's a little foul prone, Jimmy B. I think you can get some cheap ones on him if you feed Jeremiah Robinson Earl. Really well played game. Only the early two fouls on Mahoney were an issue. No one really in foul difficulty at this stage for either team. Bounce pass to Callock. Tried to save it on the tap to Bishop, and it's collected by Moore. Oh, look at that. In the passing lane quickly, Bishop comes away with a pilfer. Callock. We talk about how Nova makes you pay for a mistake. Creighton is the same way. Great ball reversal in the knockdown from Mitch Ballard. Sometimes great offense just meets, it, it gets the job done, it gets de good defense. Absolutely. It's not like either one of these teams are playing poorly on the defensive end. Bishop clears to Zagorowski. Jefferson, that's a player control foul. Gillespie, the human floor burn, collects it as Jefferson was making a scoop to the hoop. Tough display from Colin Gillespie. Team on the ropes a little bit. Look at Gillespie get outside the restricted area, set his feet. Those aren't fun. I mean, those hurt. <laughs> you know, they're not fun. It takes some toughness to step up and take some. I'm looking at this, and you know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of Clyde Drexler in the 83 title game and young Terry Gannon was trying to guard him on a breakaway and he hugged him, he actually tackled him and it turned into an offensive foul which helped Houston get into foul difficulty. I know that was before your time. <laughs> Robinson Earl not there. And a clear out by Pallock. of them and they were salivating to finally get back here offensive foul on Moore Tim it is not easy when you're battling foul trouble to sit on the bench and only play eight minutes and then get into a rhythm offensively and Mahoney got a couple of ones to go down early and that three ball is starting to feel pretty good beating Justin Moore in the spot taking a charge impressive first three and a half minutes from that guy. And by the way, the official there that made that block charge call, Tim Clockerty, the son of John Clockerty, who was a part of perhaps the most influential block charge call ever. Ramil Robinson against Seton Hall back in 1989 at the Final Four in Seattle. Zagorowski. 54-41. They lead by a Baker's dozen. And Listen, they missed their last four shots of the first half, but they have scorched the Nets to open the second. Five out of five from the floor. Mahoney with seven, three of three, as the second stanza has gotten underway. An eight-nothing run. I think this is where the ball needs to go. You got to let Gillespie make the decision. There you go. That's a post-up dime drop from Gillespie to Daniels. 
but Gillespie's going to make good decisions down there, and the game naturally slows down when you play through the post. I love your conversation with Jay about when the post-up guards really started. There's Bella. Wave it off. And then again, in for up. That's a moving pick for Bishop, says Tim Clockerty. And flush it. I think playing through the post is a great way to go, especially with Gillespie. A lot of people would think that it was Jalen Brunson that actually started the entire post-up thing, but it was actually Ryan Archie Diacono that perfected it early on for this Wildcats program. Absolutely. Brunson just was a load with that body type of his. Daniels uses his strengths once again, and we'll see another example of the post-up. Yeah, it, that, that's a version of it, right? It's yep. not a conventional post-up, but even penetrating and then playing with your back to the basket is what Nova loves to do. You know, a lot of teams, you'd see a guard like Zagorowski dribble it that long, you'd say too much dribbling, but not with him. No, because you know he's surveying it, he's going to make the right read. Mahoney, that runner doesn't go, Bishop, the offensive rebound, another pump, and another rebound, and that'll be a foul in a shooting motion, and Jefferson will get to the line for two. Tim, bringing energy is an important skill set. And Bishop and Jefferson are the energy givers for this team. And you saw that there. Two offensive rebounds from those two guys. And Jefferson gets to the line. Damian Jefferson, really an unsung player. Transfer by way of New Mexico. He was an unsung star, really, when you think about it, a year ago with his versatility. Coach Mack calls him an emotional leader. He gives them that juice. And look at those numbers, Tim. And both these teams, to me, exemplify player development. You know, these guys get better each year. And if you're looking for the poster child for player development, look no further than Jefferson for Creighton. Shadowing Daniels now. Gillespie from downtown. And Jefferson right on cue with the rebound. Ballot, quick trigger. Oh, he's got a quick trigger. Light quick scroll McGraw. He puts it down. 59-45. Villanova just hasn't been quite sharp enough in transition, Tim, finding the three-point shooters. Robinson Earl. Paul Brenner just into the game. Clears it. Zagorowski. There's like a hockey rink in here when Zagorowski lets a three go. Daniels lost his dribble. Moore. That goes flying off the front rim. These three balls are going to have to go down for Villanova with this kind of pace. This is exactly the way Creighton wanted it. The game is far too fast for Nova right now. Yeah. And the foul, a hold inside with a mismatch. Brandon Slater really had no alternative as the pump runner was trying to post him. A transition you have to be able to build out to the three-point line. You see Slater got caught on that screen trying to help out on Ryan Kalkbrenner. And if you're tardy just by a half a second on the closeout to Ballock, it's too late. You know, Villanova's other loss in the Big East. They had a very poor shooting night at Karnasaka Gymnasium in Queens. Then in the second half, when they tried to mount a run, you could tell that the pressure of Mike Anderson's team got to his guards. Zagorowski with a quick burst for another layup, and it's 61-45. And I get the feeling the same scenario is developing with Villanova a little on their heels with the athleticism of Creighton's backcourt winning today. Now that's a rebound with authority. And a reach-in foul committed by Caleb Daniels. And Creighton is just getting anything they want offensively right now in the half court and transition. Playing with so much confidence. It's like the floor is tilted towards the Creighton basket right now, and they are shot out of a cannon. But you said it, the second Creighton started rebounding the ball defensively, consistently, that's when the pace 
increased. And those two stats are always connected. Rebounding and tempo. Yeah, and those early Villanova offensive rebounds, they're gone now. They have no offensive rebounds in the last 11 minutes. And what's happened? Blue Jays have their largest lead. <laughs> the iron so very kind to Bella. The lead is 19. Committee's top 16 <laughs> a little earlier today. They are motivated. There's no question about it. Now look at this set. Watch the elevator screens as Balak's going to eventually get here and then go back. There's going to be some elevator doors that are going to close. Watch Jefferson and Kalkbrenner. Look at them. Close the elevator door. Balak, a little sidestep and knockdown. Pretty nifty play from Greg McDermott. A near steal for Slater. Shot clock down to six. Jefferson. Rebound Gillespie. The defense from Jeremiah Robinson Earl. Gillespie for three. Gets it to go. That's a big three. 11.40 remaining to maintain contact. Well, with the way Villanova can shoot the three ball, they're they're never out of a game. I mean, there's a lot of basketball yet to be played. And the way Creighton possesses the ball, you know you're going to have a lot of opportunities offensively. Yes. Ballock again, man. Four for four, and yes, the Jays inside and out. In the first half, 22 points in the paint. In the second, five out of seven from downtown. Justin Moore can't get it to go. These threes for Villanova, if they're to make a run, are going to have to begin to fall. Yeah, six of 21 from beyond the arc for Nova. Zagorowski, not there. But again, because of pace of play, a lot more possessions for Villanova. Mano a mano. Gillespie was looking for the foul. Maybe a little too much that time. Job by Sharif Mitchell, though, to stand his ground. You think they worked on shot fakes this week in practice? Again, Greg McDermott stressed that to us. Over shot fakes. I think for the most part, Creighton's done a good job. Mitchell. Not known as a shooter. Villanova wants to see if you non-scorers take more shots. There are precious few, though, for the Creighton Blue Jays. Everyone can knock it down. Robinson Earl, not there. Out of bounds, last cut by Jefferson. <laughs> this crowd is going for the jugular, and they are loving every second of it. You can feel... The just under 2,000 fans, though, and the energy they brought to this game. I heard people at halftime just going, oh, I've been waiting all year for this. <laughs> the bank is open late on Saturday afternoon for Brandon Slater. Villanova will take it. The lead is 16. Looks like a little zone for Villanova. Creighton in a great rhythm. Drop this zone, see if he can't disjoint that flow for the Blue Jays. it back from Zagorowski. Air ball, that one. Speared out of the air by Slater. We'll see how much Nova wants to stick with that zone. I like that move from Jay Wright, though. Now we'll go a 
against Lithgow. Well, millions of kids nationwide are without normal access to sports and play due to COVID-19. That's why here at Fox Sports, we're happy to team with Good Sports in restoring play for kids and the programs that serve them through donations of brand new sports equipment. Text PLAY to the number here on your screen to help kids stay in the game. Early, but this is a big possession. It is. And to prove the point, this is what veteran teams do. You put the onus on the officials to blow the whistle, as Caleb Daniels just did. But this is what Nova does such a good job of. They spin, they back you down, and they are not shy to play into contact. And you said it, Timmy, just put it on the official. And a great place to erase a big hole is at the free throw line. This team needs to keep on attacking and get to the charity strike because also the free throws can kind of slow the game down too. You don't think there's another run in Villanova. I mean, you're crazy. You haven't been watching a lot of college basketball. See if there's more zones. Sometimes with this three-quarter court pressure, fall back. And it looks like they're sticking with that zone, Timmy B. You got to stop last possession. Make Creighton shoot you out of it. And they can. Oh. <laughs> Bishop trying to go up, I believe may have been rooted out. Now, there's going to be a conversation between Tim Clockerty and James Breeding about whether this is an over the back or if he was rooted out. And he was rooted out. And this is a set play. Yep. Ballock shoots an air ball there it right is. to the next, yep. to the side of the rim. And Robinson Earl gets underneath Bishop. That's one of Creighton's pet plays. Whenever they see zone, they love to go to that lob. Using the derriere for the root out. And it gets Bishop to the free throw line. By the way, Nova's not gotten to the free throw line in this half until just moments ago. They need to find their way yeah. to the free throw line more here in the second half. Absolutely. It's only, like you said, only two free throw attempts in this half. Far too low, especially given the 15-point deficit. Helps slow the game down. Yes. Moore is back down. If someone helps, you kick it. If not, you play through contact. Moore will get there. And listen, the fans don't like it, but that's a foul. I mean, Justin Moore, he plays booty ball. He, he loves to, to play with his back to the basket, and he'll stick that derriere India and spin and probe and find that spot and go through the contact. That is the Nick Bob thesaurus at work, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Justin Moore is just so good and patient when he's penetrating and spinning and probing. But all of a sudden, you feel momentum slowly shifting. Yeah. I, if I'm Jay Wright, I stay with the zone. I know I know you gave him a foul last time, but Creighton has been far too comfortable going against the man-to-man. -man. Yeah, muck it up a little bit, right? Yes. <laughs> Jefferson, a blow -by. So important to have someone that's comfortable at the high post, and Jefferson is. They may have gotten a little warning here to the Creighton bench. They tell them those Blue Jays on the pine to take a seat. I believe Jacob Epperson was yeah. called out. Jacob is the uh, rarely used post player that's been banged up. Well, when you're 6'11", when you stand up, it's hard to hide. To, in transition, run back to his zone. So man to man now for the Wildcats. Yeah, especially with the guys lighting him up from three. Zagorowski took advantage of the straight line drive. I, I'm telling you, Tim, that this burst from Zagorowski has not been there throughout the season. He's got a pop to him when he's driving the ball to the basket tonight. Daniels can't connect. Rebound cleared by Jefferson. What a contribution he's made today. Oh, I thought he let it go, didn't you? I did too. O'Connell will off the heel and the rebound to Justin Moore. 
Little stop and go. Over to Robinson Earl. That's a shot he normally makes. Yeah, I mean, Jeremiah Robinson Earl, he was 10 for 11 from the floor against Marquette a few nights ago. And here this evening, just 3 of 13. He's just struggled from away from the basket on offense. You know, and I'll, I'll, tell, I'll tell you again, a loose whistle. Listen, we've played well beyond the media timeout. Now we've got one. Has allowed this pace of play to remain. The problem is sometimes when you're crashing the offensive glass, Tim, you leave yourself vulnerable to getting run on. And I think Nova's kind of gotten caught in between. They were tracking down some offensive rebounds, and their transition defense has gotten a little messy because of that. And, of course, their shooting percentages have gone down to a paltry 55% from 65%. <laughs> Pass. Oh, you know, oh, he let it go again to Mahoney. Oh, I thought Ballock was going to launch. That's kind of his style, though. Yeah. He's always going to be unselfish. Yep. Villanova needs to carve into this lead quickly. And right now, Creighton doing the job on the defensive end. Shot clock under 10. Slider. Samuels now with one to shoot. Bingo. That's a big shot for Samuels. And if you noticed, Gillespie was looking for Robinson Earl, and he knows he's having a bad second half. Only two points this half, and none in the last 12 minutes. So he found another guy who delivered. But Creighton felt like they did everything right on that defensive possession, but that's just no before you. They'll play yeah. deep into the clock, no question. Antoine Jones, Bishop on the offensive boards. Over Robinson Earl. Little drop step maneuver. 74 58. Leads the Big East in field goal percentage, and there you see why he is clever around the rim. A steal by Jones. Zagorowski for three. Well, he was going for the gusto that time. Green light is always on. Yeah. Gillespie can't get it to go. With Robinson Earl missing and Gillespie missing from three, makes it really tough on the Wildcats. What a blow by. Timeout, Villanova. I'm sure there's a little chip on the shoulder. Sure. Of Mitch for this one. Two great guys, though. Tim, yeah. as you know, we get to know these guys a little bit covering the Big East. Two of the best dudes you'll talk to in the conference. Well, Robinson Earl could have gone to the NBA already. He chose to come back because of the culture Jay Rice created. What a block for yeah. Christian Bishop. Robinson Earl on the deck fighting for it. It is cleared. Into the hands of Jefferson, who gives it up to Zagorowski. That, that play illustrates the difference between Creighton. They were kind of labeled as the, the finesse soft team. They're much better defensively and a little bit more gritty this year. Going for the crowd pleaser, the foul committed by Robinson Earl. Rim protection, so important. And Christian Bishop's not the biggest guy in the world, but he's quick off his feet. Good instincts, times it up. Beats Justin Moore at the rim, and Creighton's able to corral the loose ball. That guy right there is having a heck of a season for Creighton. And, and a lot of these guys for Creighton do play in a degree of anonymity. And I think Christian Bishop is a classic example of that in many respects. You're going to get to know him between now and NCAA tournament time. No question about that. Lee Summit, Missouri. West High School. Well, I think when you look at Creighton's kind of rise here the last two seasons, we know about the stars. Tyson Alexander a year ago, Balog, Zagorowski. But I think it's the others and their ability to raise their game that has taken Creighton from good to great. T. Robinson Earl turned that shot down. He knows it's just not there for him in the second half. He wasn't turning that down the other night against Marquette. No, not at all. Daniels 
Would have counted had it gone. 350 remaining. It has been. And he didn't have opportunities to rack up non-con quality wins. And remember, Villanova played through that 27-day layout for them, but they had enough big-time victories to hold serve, so to speak. They tried to put some games the conference has together with Villanova late in the season. That win against Texas, Great absolutely one. legit. The Big 12 conference probably, after the Big 10, has the most shots at getting multiple teams into the Sweet 16 as any conference in America. Yeah, the, the committee really high on the Big 12. Yeah, there are a lot of Big 12 teams in that top 16 seeds. Outstanding win for UConn earlier today, you may have seen here on Fox. Helps them out, beating Xavier. Of course, he had them on the first four outline coming into the day. Ballock. Up against the clock. Nothing but nylon. Big time. Ballock. You're not going to beat them when those are falling. Going for the hammer dunk. It would have been a thing of beauty for Slater, but a foul underneath. It's just as this Tim, this is ridiculous for Mitch Ballard. I mean, it doesn't matter where he's at, how his body's contorted. I mean, he's gonna knock the shots down. And look, I'm gonna tell you, as announcers, we are subjective and objective okay no doubt but i'm a little biased for any left-hander that can shoot it like that you know I've no, seen you, yeah, yeah, no yeah, yeah. one ever called a right-hander crafty no mitch ballock is crafty he'll turn down one you think he's got to take and then up against the clock when you gotta have it bingo and, it, and it's got to be so frustrating to guard a guy like that where Villanova was attached to his body one second on the clock He's fading away, but if he can get the shot off you kind of feel like it's going in regardless of where he's at on the court That shots kind of Shows kind of what the day was like though for Creighton. It does, you know, yeah. they were not gonna be stopped No, sometimes you run into a buzzsaw and that's kind of what happened for Nova today He's ran into a team that was hot, motivated, and clicking on all cylinders. And just as Marquette didn't need to see Villanova when they did, yep. the next team on Villanova's schedule, that's that's not that's not a good opportunity for you. Zagorowski gets another one to go. Tony, though, that guy right there is by far the best he's looked all season. Yeah, he looks like the Big East preseason player of the year in season today. Yes. Oh. Three's just not falling. Justin Moore can make them. Gillespie struggled. It's certainly Robinson Earl. Look at that, though, from the Wildcats. Love it. Just love it. That's why college basketball is great. The defense and the effort doesn't stop. For 40 minutes. Well, and that's why Villanova's great. I mean, they're down 20 on the road, haven't played well, and they're still diving after loose balls. You, you, you play to a standard, not the score. You know, I don't think they've played that badly. They just haven't shot it well. No, they haven't shot the ball well. And because of that, it seems like yeah. they've been in transition defense the whole game. Agreed. You know? Agreed. And I think that that stat that McDermott talked to us about in terms of possession and speeding up the game that has paid dividends oh, it's a wonderful State. yeah it's a wonderful shocker yep. you know guy fred van fleet wasn't the most athletic guy in the world but he was strong he changed speeds and you can argue he's a better player at the next level than he was in college I agree This one. How about that? <laughs> he's not perfect. He's he's mortal. Bishop closing out on the defensive boards. Been a real difference maker and a standing ovation from this 10% of 18,000 on hand here at the CHI Health Center. Ryan Antoine, number one, on the floor. 
for Villanova here in the closing moments. It's good to see him out there. Count's a guy that's just been riddled with shoulder problems. Yeah, they could use the depth. And I wonder when we'll begin to talk about Trey Patterson and Villanova. What a story he will be. Maybe, just maybe, quick time out here. Coming here from Jay Wright. Maybe there's a little something, something coming from Villanova in terms of the tournament. Giving teams an opportunity to play. You figure Villanova is a lot, but that's another quad one opportunity for some of these teams that need additional games. There's a steal out of the pressure. And a three ball that finally falls for Villanova. Jermaine Samuels gets it to go. See, and you might be saying, what's Nova doing? I mean, they're, they're down. This, but you you got to say you're going to fight until the end. And that's what they're doing. Yeah, that last time out was about uh, the big picture for Jay Wright. Yes. But no matter what, no, no matter the score, how the game's going, how much time's left, Villanova basketball, you play a certain way, and that's that's why you're continuing to, to fly around if you're a Wildcat. Someday for Christian Bishop, too, huh? Yeah, it, it's about time. If you're doing the all Rodney Dangerfield team, get no respect. Bishop yeah. needs to be on it. Ballock gets a round of applause. He goes to the bench. This crowd loves Ballock. They really react to his energy effort and obviously shot making. Yeah, I'm thinking Creighton may want to play. That's the only thing. You, you play well, you don't want to lay off. Yeah, you want to keep playing. I, I, I think they would welcome a call from the commissioner's office right now. <laughs> keep this thing going. Run it back tomorrow with how hot these guys are. Yep. But that's one of the dilemmas that all of the conferences really have. Yeah. Uh, it, it's a factor that in terms of getting opportunities for teams that may be on the bubble, let's use UConn as an example. You know, some additional games for them might help. Absolutely. Antoine. Not there. More will pop than he gets it to go. And a quick foul, give it up. <laughs> some of the yeah, some of heard those. Some of the crowd, I think they want to stop at Pauley's or the Drover <laughs> sooner rather than later. <laughs> I think you're right. Two wonderful stops if you're ever in Omaha. But I'm surprised. I really thought that this game would be a wire job. But I don't think even Jay Wright thought that he would run into this buzzsaw. Well, I don't think Greg McDermott thought that this game would go the way it went. But when you have a veteran group that is so offensively gifted, you can have nights like this. Listen to this for Zagorowski. day, March 12th, when sports ended and so much of our lives were affected, Zagorowski was hoping, just hoping he might play in the Big East Tournament. Well, now, this year, healthy again, he has Creighton on the precipice of making another march in March. What a performance.